and welcome to Kang the Keto with Donna. Ah, uh, it's winter time. I'm sorry, I like the cold. I like fall and winter a little bit more than spring and summer, so am I an odd duck? Anybody else out there like winter? Uh, tell me in the comments, though, what do you like to do in the winter? Um, even if it's just at home or outdoors, uh, what do you like to do in the winter time? Anyway, for me, I'm just a homebody most of the time, so I just like wearing fuzzy socks and being under a blanket watching a movie and maybe having some hot chocolate and definitely comfort food. So I heard it may snow today. So for me, that gets me excited as long as I'm not driving it. So I wore my Let It Snow shirt. Can you see that? <laughs> when it's cold, especially if it snows, I really love the comfort food. So comfort food can still be keto. And today is going to be a chicken pot pie. Plus, I was checking out my freezer and I had some leftover fathead dough, like a little over a half of a, a batch that I put in the freezer because it freezes well. So I'm going to do my pot pie with a fathead dough today. So now we talked about the crust, let's get to uh, chopping up some veggies. I'll show you the veggies that I like to use and still keep it like a pot pie, but still uh, keep the carbs low. So last year, most of the recipe I did, I think I did a little combination of recipes, but most of it I think was from DeliciousRecipes.com, which I will leave a link. But this year, I want to try something a little bit different because I want to tweak it a little bit. And it's going to be from the girl who ate everything. I don't know if I've ever done anything from her site. So I'm going to check that out today. It just has a, a different amount of things. I like the mixture. So I'm, I'm going to see how it comes out. So this one is an experiment. So here's what I'm going to use today. Basically all the recipes you're going to find out there are going to start off with these three things. So you got your chicken. You can use bone broth or just regular chicken broth. Some heavy whipping cream and some cream cheese. Pretty much all the recipes just have a different amount of each. So that's why I'm trying a little bit different one today. Uh, it's just great to have some leftover chicken. So this is, um, I've got, uh, let's see. Oh, I had a couple of uh, boneless skinless thighs and uh, one or two little chicken tenders. So decided I got to cut that up, but I just cooked it ahead of time to so make it easier for later. Are going to use a little xanthan gum if you want it a little thicker. So uh, we don't know till the end. Uh, and we, if you are going to use it, you're going to use it sparingly, maybe a quarter, no more than a half a teaspoon. So for my veggies, I cut up some celery. So I have a little leftover celery. You can just use, it's about a half a cup or just a quarter of a regular onion in there. And here's the controversial ones. Yes, some carrots. I found these little petite carrots and my husband will have the rest. Plus I can use it for stock, but they're really small and just punch up the color a little bit and it's a little more pot pie-ish with a little carrot. You can obviously skip that if uh, you're concerned about the carbs there, but I don't put very much in there. So um, I, I'm using the carrots. But the one thing you should not skimp on, sorry, it's open bag because I already washed them. It's radishes. Unbelievable. That is so good in this. And now a word from our sponsor. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have any sponsors. <laughs> But I did want to mention something about the radishes again. I am telling you, in a beef stew, a pot pie, or even a chowder, because I'm going to be making a New England chowder soon, it is perfect. It takes on the flavor of the liquid or it surrounds. Now, I'll be honest, for breakfast, sometimes I've done like, you know, just hash browns type of, uh, you know, with the radishes. And there's a little off flavor. It still tastes good and a perfect consistency. But you can tell a little bit of the difference on that. But in stews and, and today in this pot pie, you can't tell at all. It is a great substitute for potatoes and it has that perfect mouthfeel. So definitely give it a try. And just to be safe, I have my radishes and carrots, even though they're diced up pretty small, I'm going to boil them uh, for about 15 minutes and then test that out and make sure they're not going to be hard for the pot pie. Okay, I got my big pot. I got about two tablespoons of unsalted butter, and that's melting over medium heat. And once that melts a little bit, I'm going to start off by sauteing the onions and celery. So I did, uh, like I said, about a quarter of an onion, maybe a little bit more. So it equals about a half a cup of onion and half a cup 
of celery. Okay, so I'll tell you those onions and celery for about five minutes. Mm, I just love the smell of butter and I love the smell of onions. You know, you could add garlic also. Um, I think I did in the last recipe last year that I did and this one didn't call for it and I actually forgot about it. So we're just going with the celery and onion. We've got some garlic powder. That'll work. So five minutes. Well, I messed up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the last few ingredients I put in, the video recorder was not recording. So, uh, let me see you try to salvage this because I've been wanting to do this since October. Alrighty, so after the celery and onions were cooked about five minutes, I added my pre-boiled radishes and the carrots, just sauteed it for like another 30 seconds or a minute. I added a, a cup and a half of the chicken broth only a quarter cup of the heavy whipping cream and four ounces of the cream cheese. And then I whisked that all together. And while that was the cream cheese is melting a little bit, I added the spices. You get a teaspoon of the garlic powder. It said uh, just about a quarter teaspoon of the poultry seasoning, but I have seen others that have up to a teaspoon. So I put a half a teaspoon in a quarter teaspoon of either your your pink salt or sea salt, a teaspoon of the thyme, this is my little old bottle, uh, the thyme, and just a quarter teaspoon of the black pepper. And that's where I left off. <laughs> and I'm still on a medium heat. Okay, so now comes the xanthan gum part. Personally, she has it that you can just sprinkle over the top and I'm sure that would be fine. I prefer to do a little slurry first. So I've got a quarter teaspoon in another little container and just gonna use some of the liquid. And I got my little baby whisk, isn't it cute? <laughs> and I'm gonna whisk that together first and then pour it back in. And like I said, a little goes a long way. really bothers me about pot pies and restaurants is it's normally the filling and either just a, a little puff pastry just laid on top or some biscuit on top which is not a pot pie to me and even if they do a, a nice little pie crust on top it's never on the bottom now when you have a pie like a blueberry pie or apple pie and there a crust on the bottom to me a pie a crust is on the bottom you know and then usually a top one on the top so that's how I like to do my pot pie and I used to do it in these little, um, have these nice little corningware bowls, and that came out really good in that when I used to make even a traditional pot pie. And since going keto, it works well with that too. But last year I found these cute little, and the cute little fluted mini pie pans, little ceramic, beautiful, different little colored edges. So that's what I'm going to use today. Now for a keto pot pie, you can do a fathead dough, which like I said, I had leftovers, so I'm going to do that. Or you can do a, a keto pie crust. And a good one, I believe, was on Fit to Serve, and I will put a link for that as well. I had tried it both ways last year, and I did really like the pie crust as well as the fathead dough. Like I said, I'm going to use this fathead dough up, so uh, that's what I'm doing today. I'm getting ready to roll out my dough between two sheets of parchment paper. And I have taken my little pie dishes and I have buttered them. Some say you should, some say you shouldn't. I don't know, I'm doing it. So they're already pre-buttered. Now comes the fun part. I think I had too much parchment paper. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Not the most gorgeous in the world, but that's what's great with fathead dough. If it breaks a little bit, you just kind of piece it together. That works for me. It's going to taste just as good. So those are my little pot pies, and I like to do a little egg wash. And I just do one egg with some heavy whipping cream and do it just like a regular pie crust. We're going to put it in the oven for th at 350 degrees for about 20-25 minutes. And I do not put on a cookie sheet. I never could get the bottom good on these little pot pies. 
you know, before before keto when I used to do a traditional crust. So I have learned not to put it on a cookie sheet and to put it on the bottom rack. And you're just going to put a few slits in. Let the heat escape. Okay, and we're going in the oven. There we go. I think I had a little thicker dough on the left side. But anyway, so that's my pot pies. I hope I haven't said turkey. I keep thinking I'm going to say turkey, but it is chicken pot pie. If I said turkey, I apologize. But there we go. Got to let it cool for about five minutes or so. Uh, but of course, the dishes are really hot, so I'm going to put them on a plate with a little napkin so it doesn't slat around. And I cut a little section in, of it just to kind of show you how beautiful the inside came. See, it wasn't def woo, definitely not too watery. The crust is cooked nice. That came out just beautifully. So that is our chicken pot pie, and I think it came out great. Well, that to me came out perfect, absolutely perfect. Even my husband loved it. <laughs> can't, like I said, you can't tell the difference with the radishes versus potatoes. That is a great thing. The uh, fathead dough, eh, sometimes I had to piece it together. It's not the prettiest thing, but uh, it cooked perfectly, and it was a great crust. The bottom cooked really good. Um, I'm glad I didn't do any more of the xanthan gum as it sat a little bit. It definitely thickened up. So a quarter to half a teaspoon, I would definitely stop there. So who says you can't have comfort food on keto? Well, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And I'd love to hear from you if you want to leave a comment about any of the ingredients or any questions you might have or any thoughts. And consider subscribing. And until next time, bye.